Hey everyone, welcome back to my running series where I remake Minecraft over and over again every couple of months with slightly different changes so I can rake in YouTube ad money from all the clicks that come in with adding Minecraft in the video title. Today, we'll be making Minecraft in 3D with Among Us characters instead of animals and- Okay, okay, I'm, I'm just kidding. Don't worry. Promise no more Minecraft. Though for today's video, we are actually going to be using the engine that I made in my last video as a starter. So how about instead I welcome you to the first video on what is going to be my brand new game. So while I don't have like all the gameplay and things sorted out yet, that's not exactly what we'll be diving into for this video. For starters, I do have a clear graphical idea of what I want to go after, and that's what we're working on in this video. And the whole thing kind of goes like this. Pixel art. Would love to make a pixel art game if I could, but it's pretty hard to draw and I'm pretty bad at drawing it. What if there was a way I could kind of cheat my way around proper pixel lighting and the finer details of pixel art by rendering 3D models into a pixel perfect scaled orthographic projection instead so it would look like pixel art without actually being pixel art. That would be pretty nice and save me a lot of time if I was going to make a game that looked like that. So without further explanation because that might just be confusing, uh, let's try and get our 3D engine to do that. So to start with, we'll be taking our old Minecraft engine and changing the camera to use an orthographic instead of a perspective projection. This basically just means that things won't change size anymore according to their distance from the camera. And you can already see that in action here, all of our cube faces are the same size now. I also made the camera look a little more isometric by adjusting some of the fixed angles, and of course I removed a bunch of the player code that was in the Minecraft clone. We won't be needing most of that old code anyway, kind of just the boilerplate is useful. So next up I had to whip out the old pen and paper and work out some of the math because it was kind of confusing me how all the angles and everything for the camera should actually work. But eventually I got all the effects implemented back and got this cool looking 2D, 3D Minecraft world. And now if we change the camera angles around again to just use the rotation around the x-axis and not any rotation around the y-axis, we can start getting this sort of top-down 3D, 2D look. This poorly drawn diagram might help to explain a bit, I hope. I also got the camera moving around again, kind of just for funsies, but I think it looks pretty cool. So once the basics were down, I took the time here to redo a lot of the old render to make it fit more the new style of art that it was going to have to render, instead of these sorts of Minecraft worlds. This meant primarily removing infinite worlds and all the complexities that come with that, and also limiting the height of the worlds, just down to 16 tiles. Super tall worlds in a rendering context where you can't really see height don't really make too much sense anyway. So after a few days work of polishing and a whole lot of refactoring, we finally have the rendered pair down to this single grass plane with a moving sun, finally fixed around a visible camera space by the way, and this 2D 3D sprite dude with proper shadows, slowly approaching the look that I'm going after. The important things to note here are that this guy, terrible though the pixel art may be, is actually being rendered as a 2D sprite in 3D space, meaning that he gets proper shading. Additionally, as you can kind of see as the light goes past, he's got proper normal mapping as well, meaning that the lighting affects him as though he were 3D even though he's still only a sprite. Pretty cool, I think. The next thing to tackle though is making sure that this light that kind of just floats around is actually respecting the 3D world space. Right now the light just kind of shoots through walls without any regard for them and of course that won't look very good in real scenes. After going through a lot of different strategies which could potentially be used to solve the problem all the way from true 3D point lighting with shadows down to just not doing anything at all, I decided some classic voxel flood fill lighting would be the best solution here. And I have explained this before because I implemented it actually in my second video, but here are the basics. Basically, whenever something that emits light, either a tile or an entity, is placed down, we need to propagate its light value through the world, which looks something like this. These light values are also capped between 0 and 15. Basically, whatever something light emitting is placed down in the world, we set the light value of that tile and then propagate the light out into surrounding transparent tiles via a breadth first search where the light value is decremented by one for each tile it spreads. Removing a light is similar, the same process happens just in reverse, and then light is propagated again afterwards for other lights that we might have removed in the process. And then since we don't allow light to spread through solid tiles, of course, we have something of an approximation of what real lighting might look like in the scene. You can see that in action here with the same basic scene just with the light map rendered out and a bigger wall behind the player to show the effect better. 
When we go back to the normal render egg though, things do look pretty rough and blocky, so obviously something needed to be done about this. And I took the easy solution here and basically just implemented some smoothing on the edges of the light map so that each corner of each tile takes the average of the four light map values around it to produce its final light map value. And that looks something like this in the light map. And then after some tweaks to how the lighting was calculated per pixel as it didn't look quite right at first, I ended up with this look in the final scene, which is really good for this sort of rough approximation, I think. You can definitely tell that the lighting is kind of calculated in tile space if you're really looking for it, but I don't think the effect is super noticeable. And I think it's a really good trade-off between reasonable performance, reasonable shading, and just reasonable lighting. So next up on my list of things to do to get the game looking the way I want is to add some sort of graphical improvement around the edges in the world. Let me explain what I mean. If we take this scene here, where there's a completely flat plane and then this block of grass up here next to our dude, it's kind of hard for your eyes to tell what exactly the seed is doing in terms of depth because of the camera angle. Like it's kind of just tough to tell that this tile of grass even has a top face. And in more complex scenes like this one, even though this is only one layer of random tiles stacked on top of a layer of completely flat tiles, it's really hard for your eyes to tell exactly how tall everything is. Like for instance, to me, even though this is only two layers of tiles in this scene, it kind of looks like things go up to the left, just because my eyes don't really have enough depth information to make sense of these tiles. So the solution I wanted here was to basically highlight the edges around tiles to show where depth in the scene changes. This is frequently just kind of drawn into pixel art anyway, but I thought I could give it a shot at doing it automatically through some edge detection. So using a basic edge detector that relies on the depth of each pixel, which you can see shown here through the camera's depth map, we can basically draw edges into a separate texture whenever one pixel is significantly closer to the camera than some number of those around it. You can basically see in the code this just boils down to nine samples of the depth texture which are being compared using some threshold to determine how on the edge a pixel is. To give a little bit of a clearer idea, when we just render this out as a texture into our scene, it looks something like this. Then if we just threshold this texture a little bit and multiply it by the colors in our existing scene, it looks something like this. Even though what's going on still isn't 100% clear, I think this gives way more clarity to the depth of the scene. It also means I don't have to manually compute and draw edges on everything, which is also pretty nice. One remaining problem though is that this wood block, even though it's kind of the same height as the grass, kind of just looks out of place and like it doesn't really blend, so I'd also like to add some edges in there. So using a similar idea, if we just render all of the block IDs into a separate texture and then use that same sort of check if this pixel is next to other pixels which are different from it, we can also add edges in based on block ID. Which looks like this in the final scene, which I think makes things even clearer for the eye. Now the final thing to do for this preliminary game graphics experiment was to get a better player character drawing, because the one that I'd drawn wasn't exactly cutting it for me. And I really wanted to test this sort of 3D models in 2D 3D space idea I had and see how it looked, so it was time to model a basic boxy player. Now while I have used like fancy 3D modeling software like Blender and stuff like that before, I am truly a programmer at heart, and I wanted to be able to model my models in code where at all possible. So I started off by writing some basic modeling utilities. These basically just help me construct the vertices for basic cube faces and boxes. And after a little bit of messing around, the very first thing I got drawing was this box which will eventually be the player's head. Next up I added in some textures and tried to get those to work on the box to what was initially uh, what one might call limited success. And you can see me here messing around a little bit with rotation and trying to get the texture coordinates right. If you can see that little transparent part in the bottom of the head, that uh, shouldn't be there. But eventually we got our boy here limbless and rotating with the correct texture coordinates, just no arms and legs yet. And at long last, I, his creator and god, gave our dude some limbs. No opposable thumbs though, we don't want things getting too out of hand. I also shrunk our dude down a little bit, changed up the sizes of his head, body, and limbs because he was starting to look like, I can't really remember, something from some other game, but I, I can't, really, can't really remember the name or anything. 
I think it must have been like Blockcraft 3D or something like that, but whatever. Anyway though, this is kind of where our journey comes to an end for this video. I added in some other testing textures and made this final testing scene, but this is really the graphical base of the new game. The code isn't up on GitHub because A, it's kind of garbage, and B, if I'm actually going to develop a game, I kind of need to figure out a better licensing model for the code than just throwing it up on GitHub or something like that. Oh, and I've also started a Twitter. If you want to go follow me there and hear more from me than just my monthly, bi-monthly, every six months uh, YouTube uploads. So go give me a follow if you feel like it or you want to tweet something at me. I am at JDAH with two underscores afterwards. I'll probably also announce any streams or other stuff that I'm up to there. Last but not least, my Atlas VPN deal is still running. If you want to check that out, there's a link in the description. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.